Uh, welcome to our new 2022 first uh, PA meeting. Uh, I'd like to welcome everyone to the call and uh, we can start. Okay, so the first thing on the list, on my list here is, uh, Michelle, do you wanna give uh, my treasure report? And can we get, you know, can we post that in the chat? Chat is disabled. Oh yeah. All right, so, second. Okay, hi uh, everyone. Um, yes, for the uh, December, the treasury report for the month of December 2021 is currently available on the uh, Brooklyn Tech PA um, website, as well as in the chat right now. So as you can see from the report, so for the month of December, uh, PA has raised in approximately $64,500. And the new, the, um, new activity that we actually did in uh, the month of December is for the Lunar New Year event. Um, so for the detail of the event, I will leave it to the VP of the event to um, speak about it shortly after this. And continue with, uh, with the report. You can see there is uh, a, we actually received a refund uh, from the deposit that we made last year, last school year, not this year, last school year uh, that, uh, that we were not able to close due, due to the pandemic. So that's the uh, 5,500 approximately, $5,575. Other than that, uh, we have some uh, expenses because for the um, for the picture day, the faculty picture day, and we have a expense for um, you know we did some um, picture rec recognition type of event, so that's uh, some very minor expense there. Um, that's all. Uh, okay. If you have any question, uh, I will be glad to. Uh, thanks, Michelle. Thank you. Okay, and I'd like to thank um, Pat and Susan. Great job in um, doing fundraising for us. Um, uh, Patricia did a pretty good job uh, getting um, donation uh, from matching fund of 20K gift to the, um, the PA. And so, you know. Right, she, so uh, yeah. we want to, so I'll, I'll speak on behalf of both of us since Patricia's not here. We're really lucky that we have a company that is willing to match. If we hit 40% of our parent body contributing, we have a company that will give us $20,000. Um, it's school-wide participation. We are respectfully requesting a donation of $600 a student, but honestly, anything that you can give or feel like giving counts towards the 40%. And past donations also count, and I will put the page in the chat if the chat is working. And everyone should also be mindful about asking their employers if they do matching donations because A, that would be great. And the matching donations will also count towards the 40%. And we really appreciate everybody's generosity and help. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to the PA. You can donate by check. Um, you could drop it off at the school. You can mail it to the school and you can do the online links through the PA website and the school website. All right, thank you, Susan. You're welcome. Okay, uh, Kim uh, and Jennifer, you wanna talk about um, diversity at Lunar New Year? Be happy to. Good evening, everybody. Um, a week from tomorrow, um, Jan Friday, January 28th, we will be hosting the fifth annual Lunar New Year celebration. It will, as we did last year, it will be a virtual event on our YouTube channel. And next week we will be sending out several messages to you to give you the link on how to get in to it. I believe we start at six o'clock. We've got some wonderful entertainment from tech students as well as tech parents. Um, we would love for you to, to join us for that. And immediately following our show, we will be drawing the winners from our mega raffle and awarding prizes for our, our talent show. 
So it's, it's a lot of fun. I, you know, you can sit in your living room and, and stay nice and warm and we would love for you to come. We had several hundred people attend. We're hoping to get some, some more students to attend this year, but please, if you could make some time um, to come to the event, it, 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 it would really, it, it would mean a lot to us because we've had these kids have put in a lot of hard work um, doing these videos and I'm sure they'd love to have a nice audience to, to enjoy it. And, and Jennifer would also, Jennifer Lou would like to talk. She is my, my co-chair of the event and she's been working so very hard with her committee on this event. Go ahead, Jenna, Jennifer, excuse me. She's muted. Go ahead. You should be able to unmute. There you go. Um, 谢谢所有人的帮忙, um, 非常感谢。那些义工的学生和家长，记得下个星期五晚上呃看我们的春晚，谢谢。Thank you. Uh, thanks, um, Jennifer and Jim. Um, just a, a few quick things, um, and then I will let Mr. Um, Mary make a, any you know make an announcement or anything. A uh, few things that um, that went on with uh, with the PA at this point in time. Um, Kamplan is started uh, last last Sunday, I believe. So um, we only had 30 students registered uh, for the Kamplan plan. So we're looking for uh, more students registered that's, um, that's gonna take the SAT in a couple, couple of months. Uh, there's still, you still can register. Um, it's on Saturday, it's on sun, Saturday and Sunday. So you guys still have time. The, you know, you got, you know, the student would only miss one um one session. Um, so you guys still can register if you you know want to register your child for that. Okay, the next on the list I have here is um we're gonna do the P is gonna give um some gears to the SEL, and so we you know, pay as um, gear that we can afford to give to use as, um, you know, to get kids to, you know, fill out some reports, um, survey. And once they fill out that survey, they will, um, you know, be given, a, you know, a tech gear. Okay, and now I pass it on to Mary. Do you wanna say a few words, Mary? Uh, did we lose Mary? Uh, she's on mute. Thank you. Okay. Um, not everyone who fills out the SEL stuff is going to get merchandise. It's more like a uh, just a random drawing for the okay. people who go to the meeting. So, um, is there is there a reason I can't see all the parents today? Is that? Uh, no, you should be able to. Oh. I can only see us unless there's only two parents participating. <laughs> anyway, okay. Um, I mean, uh, with their videos on, it's just kind of odd. Uh, uh, just so you know, People Pass uh, came back up, but um, their email server is still down, so um, you won't, you can't re-register and you can't reset your password because that goes through your email address. So just we're just going to have to wait until that. I can get you codes, but it's really useless right now. I can't even get into the system to get codes. I have to go to a separate spreadsheet. So just sit tight with people path. We're happy that the um, part of it's already back up with, um, so teachers can access grades and, and parents can see things. But if you've forgotten your password, you're just gonna have to sit tight, I'm sorry. Try using your, looking at your student's account if they let you. Um, the COVID, um, this form is still on the website. If, you, uh, if your child tests positive for COVID, um, if you have not gotten a letter about when your child can return, you can call the Office of Health and Safety. Um, uh, the number, I, I, somebody wanted to put the number in the chat because I can't do anything in chat because chat is disabled. Um, the number is 718-804-6428. Uh, 718-804-6428. Can somebody put that in chat? Yeah. That's the Office of Health and Safety. If you're not, if you need to get, if you have any questions about COVID, you can email that, or you can call that number or also you can e uh, email report COVID at BTHS 
um, dot edu, and that should help you. Other than that, that's what's um, happening right now. And um, on to whoever's next. Nice to see everyone. Although I'd like to see everyone. Keep the number again. Seven one eight eight zero four six four two eight. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, so I know parents is anxious about asking Mr. Newman a bunch of questions. So, Mr. Newman, it's all you. All right. Um, first, I, I want to talk about uh, some uh, sort of recent changes that are coming down the pike. Um, one, grades uh, due to, as everybody knows, schedule uh, uh, being temporarily down. Um, and as Mary talked about, all features, it's not fully functional yet. All features are not up. One of the main features that are not up on our side is known as the extractor. Um, that is how we process grades. So to make a long story short, uh, teachers are going to input grades directly into the DOE system um, and not use uh, a pupil path for grades because they're not able to do so. Um, what are the ramifications of this? Two things. One, grades are being pushed back a little bit. So senior grades are actually due a different day than everybody else's grades. Senior students will get their grades uh, inputted on Friday the 28th, which means that the very next day, I guess that's Saturday 29th, you'd be able to see it. Um, and everybody else's grades are going to be on a Wednesday the 2nd, meaning that you'll be able to see it when it rolls over on Thursday the 3rd. Where are you gonna be able to see it? You, in a number of places actually, you can go into your NYC student account and I'm gonna, you don't have to write this down. I'm gonna send an email explaining all of this. You could see it in your NYC student account as a traditional report card, but you also will be able to see it in pupil path that syncs from the DOE system. Um, not in a report card though, because we didn't type it into pupil path. It will not be in the report card feature, but it will be in the transcript feature. So you won't see it as a report card per se, but subject by subject, you will see a new grade populated on the transcript from fall of 2021, right? So, uh, so I'll be sending this all out in an email. I just want you to know grades are being pushed back a little bit. It should appear on the calendar tomorrow. Those are the dates, seniors, Friday the 28th, um, and everyone else Wednesday the 2nd with uh, you being able to view them one day later on each of those. Um, all right, hopefully I explained that well. Um, we are modifying slightly and I will send out tomorrow, uh, next uh, week's region schedule, modifying Friday to make it mirror a little bit of more in line with the schedule on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. If you had noticed on the last schedule I sent out, Tuesday is a shortened schedule. We're running classes one through five periods. And then Wednesday, it's six through 10. Then Thursday was one through five. And then there was no six through 10. So now we're going to run Friday being a six through 10 um, and potentially a makeup day for those MAP assessments. Um, and, and I hopefully everybody understands that the MAP assessments are for the freshmen and the sophomores who already took the exam uh, a month and a half ago or so. Um, what other changes do I have? I don't know. Not off the top of my head. So why don't I take some questions? I, so how are people going to ask questions, Lincoln? If there's no chat. Oh, we go. Um, Vita, let's open up the chat. Oh, no, oh, we opened up for me. Oh, great. I was hoping no chat. <laughs> <laughs> the chat is open. No chats, no questions. Here we go. All right. Lincoln, are you going to read the questions to Mr. Newman? Yeah, I am. I'm trying to get ready. Give me a second. Okay. In the meantime, I'm going to post the link to our YouTube channel. Please subscribe to our channel. Um, it's really important that you subscribe to our channel. The more subscribers we have, the better we are. Thanks, Rita. All right. Okay, first question. Okay. Okay, if you need, oh, that's Mary. Okay, going down, Jerry. This is from Jerry. Um, saw an email today notifying of 213 cases. My child heard a rumor of 125 case in one week. They closed the school. Is there is there any truth in that? So um, 
one obviously not we're still standing but um and and i will say i wanted to point out the, the 200 i think I thought it was 15 but uh, the the 213 or 15 cases was from the last time i sent an email and to make a long story short i haven't sent an updated case email since last tuesday so that covers nine days the 213 or 15 cases um which whatever number i sent and um, so that's that's what it is. And so uh, 20 something cases uh, per day we've seen, um, which is actually less than prior to the break that we were seeing where we were seeing 30 something cases a day, to be honest. Um, so school closures, um, the, the, the DOE rules around school closures are this, that if your uh, positivity rate exceeds the positivity rate of New York City, right? Then a case is open where they review the case to see if there is connections between the case and other uh, cases. In other words, uh, was there spread in a classroom? Was there spread amongst the team? The, you know, so you have you, you, you have 30 cases in a day, but 10 of them were in the same classroom. Those are things they're, they're looking for spreading. But it has to be your positivity rate has to be above the city. I think the city positivity rate is somewhere between 15 and 20% right now as it, it is spiking. I know it's going down, but even at you know 10%, that, that would mean that we'd have to have 600 kids in a seven day moving average. So uh, so we're not, we're not even coming close to those numbers, even at 10%. Okay, thank you, Mr. Newman. All right, the next question, what is 40% of 20K if we are short? Yes. If we are short, we will, you know, yeah, we will, you know, make it up to get there. Okay, uh, next is instruction in email for students to email their teacher. My child received one reply from a teacher. All other have not yet replied. Um, it's been two weeks and multiple email has been sent. So, so Jerry, it sounds like you're saying um, the, that, you, have, you know somebody who has COVID or you're talking about somebody who has COVID and they're looking for services, um, uh, therefore um, asynchronous instruction, office hours. So I wonder, is that being supplied? Um, uh, that I guess I, I need a little bit more information. Um, if you are having, if you need to contact a teacher and you're having problems doing so, please contact the assistant principal or even me and we'll make sure the teacher responds to you. But if you're looking for a teacher to give services and they're giving the service, maybe they haven't responded because the student is is uh, is getting the services and coming to office hours. I, I, I don't know that. Uh, my question, is there, a, is there a quick way to find out what an AP principal is? Um, it's on the website. So if it's a math teacher, it's the AP in mathematics, Dan Amato, like all, all these, I'm not just, you know, rattle off all their names, but it's all on the website, who the assistant principal is of each department. Um, and you can get also a staffing list and you'll organize by department and you'll see the assistant principal and the ability to email them. Uh, and you'll see below them, you know, the name of your teacher. So you'll know you're in the right place, if that makes sense. Okay. And this is from Roxana. How will students learn about the majors beyond the website? Yeah, um, so the uh, or c considering that we have sophomore advisory, we're going to do it through sophomore advisory, where we're going to do sort of push-ins, if you will, where in sophomore advisory, students are going to find out information on all the majors, um, and there are going to be videos on all the majors, and after the push-ins, um, those videos will all be put on the website for everybody to view. And at the end, uh, where everybody was available to view all the videos and see the presentations on all the majors, then the process will open up. Um, I believe that is right after the break where, uh, the, I'm talking about the February break, where students are starting to apply for their majors. They get like five days to, uh, make, their, um, to make their decisions. Um, during those five days, all the videos would be up for reference. And, um, and then we take about a week to uh, sort it all out and see who ends up in what majors. And then we inform you a week later. Yeah, so. not a question on that one. Now, what if a student made a mistake? Can they change their major? Um, if you, you can, you get a week to fill out the choices. So if you did it on the first day and you changed it the second day and you change it again the fifth day, that's fine. We take the latest version. So okay. if, you, if you went the whole week 
and then messed up on the very last version, um, then uh, that's a problem because then I've already did, I've already started the process. And as you can imagine, a any single kid that is a problem uh, or wants to switch would cause a domino effect and I have to redo everything, believe it or not. So um, then it's kind of locked in. Um, that there is, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, if you make an app, like there is a window where, you know, a hundred kids, let's say, will not fill it out at all. So I, there's some time after it closes where I chase those hundred kids down and make them make a decision. I literally, you know, fill it out right now sort of thing. So I'm not going to say, I, I'm not, I don't know how long it's going to stay open past that. We're probably going to close it. And so, and actually kids who, if I can't find the kids right away, the kids who didn't fill it out, it more, I get them more likely on the tail end. So we've decided what majors everybody gets into. And then I have space in three majors. You never filled it out. I said, here's your three choices. There's where I have space, choose one of them. So there are potentially some negative effects to not filling it out at all or filling out the wrong thing. You get a week, just make sure you get it right. <laughs> so okay. that's that. You could do it a thousand times though. Okay. Uh, this is from, the next question is from Erica. Erica, it's a long question, so I'm going to paraphrase for you here. All right, go for it. <laughs> so if a student um, can't see the grades in pupil pad, how would they correct any any issues? Um, I think you can see them now. I think the student version is up now. Oh, the student version is up, okay. Yeah, I think you could see it maybe as of this morning. I don't know if somebody wants to check really quick, but I think students can see it now. All right, Erica, um, since you asked the question, can you check, see if you can see? There you go. <laughs> uh, I'm delegating today. <laughs> I hear you. Uh, Maya, uh, parents donated multiple times, only count once. Thanks, Maya. Okay, and this is Jennifer. When is the last date for teacher to submit grades? That's what I told you, that those are the dates I gave. Wednesday the 2nd for freshmen, sophomores, juniors, Friday the 28th for seniors, and you will see those grades the next day. That's when their grades are due at nine o'clock in the morning on both those days. Okay, uh, this is another COVID question. I believe you answered this one. Uh, my child is sick with COVID and received no instruction. What has been done about that? They they have no instruction. So, uh, well, so if you have, if if somebody unfortunately tests positive for COVID, you're entitled to asynchronous instruction where a teacher will put up, you know, probably in their Google Classroom or send you directly uh, whatever they, you know, think that could help you out to keep up. It might be a reading. It might be their notes from class. It depends on what a teacher decides to put up. Um, and then they are available twice a week uh, for office hours for you to come. So that's the only services slash education that you're getting um, while you're out. And so there are no synchronous lessons or Zooming or any of that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so this is from Alexandra. Uh, Alexandra is asking, um, this, I think to answer this question already, um, if the student can see the breakdown of their grade. So you said that's open already. Hopefully, yeah, if somebody can verify that, that would be great. Okay. All right, uh, next question is from Lori. Uh, Mr. Newman, my son is a freshman. As such, we are both learning about making periods. How can I find out how many marking period, uh, actually um, about marking period, how can I find out about um, the marking period, how many marking period there are and when are they? Um, marking periods? So, yeah. so we, have, we have just four marking periods all year. There is a, a midway uh, point somewhere in November where that's the first marking period. Then the end of January is a transcripted marking period. That's really the semester grade. And then another one, I think March at some point, and then, uh, which is not a transcripted grade. And then June, which is a transcripted grade. So the only ones college C is your grades from January that you're getting right now and your grades from June. The others are, you know, midway progress reports, if you will but that's it, four grades a year, two count. Okay, this one is from Daniel. What support do June have to find internship? Um, so we have an internship coordinator and we also have um, 
uh, a CTE internship coordinator. Um, the the first one is is Isaac Honor, our internship coordinator um, at large, and then the CTE one that gets kids at uh, you know like internships in 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 areas of you know our CTE majors, especially our engineering majors, is uh, Miss Wendy Chang. Um, so yeah, so those people uh, there are, I believe, internships by Mr. Honor posted on the website somewhere. And so, uh, yeah, if you have any questions about that, you could surely contact your guidance counsel that can point you in the right direction. Okay, thank you. And I know the, um, internship is posted in, um, I, I see a couple of email when people back, you know, is up. There's a couple of email that gets yeah, yeah. Um, sent to, in people back to parents about internship. I've gotten a few. But people about this, and I haven't seen anything re recently. Okay, and this is Jerry. Um, ex exactly, kids are at home instructed to, to reach out to teachers, but no teacher reply. Um, I don't know what he's talking about again. I think this is Jerry from before. Um, I think, so, so I guess he's talking about synchronous instruction. Um, I got it. So they're, they're instructed to reach out to their teachers, but the teacher's not replying. Yeah. So I guess my question is, are they receiving the synchronous instruction? Do they know where the office hours are? Um, I guess that would be first and foremost, but it is uh, not great to hear that they're not replying. So if you want to send the APs or if, you, if there's multiple, if you want to send me the names of the people and I'll make sure that you get the services you need and the responses. Um, also in kind. All right. Looking for okay. questions. Uh, from Daniel, um, senior also, the information posted is a bit sparse. Sparse. Uh, yeah. So. I don't know what that means. Um, the information posted where? Well, uh, you know, what, I mean, meeting. Daniel, what, you know, we need to know what information you're referring to. If you're talking about asynchronous instruction, what, what is posted is, is up to the teacher to post. Um, all right. Okay, next is from Angela, Angelina, actually. Uh, my son is a freshman and didn't join a club yet. He's now um, ready to join a club. Okay, or would he do that? I think he can still just show up. Maybe I'm saying that and that's crazy, but I think he could just go and be like, I, I want to be in this club and uh, just show up and uh, when they meet and... Uh, and take it from there. You know, mo many of our clubs are in person. Clubs that have a lot of students are on uh, online virtual. So we have a smattering of both. But yeah, just show up. I, I can't foresee that they're going to, you know, you're not going to get credit for the fall. You'll get credit for the spring. But more so, they're surely not going to kick you out and say you can't come to the club. Okay. And just to let you know, guys, I posted in the chat um, an email about um, get and sign up for the government website for COVID tests, just in case you guys um, decide you want to, you know, get COVID tests, self test kit. Okay. Um, okay. So this next question is: Please confirm. Um, this is from Mac. Uh, please confirm that the student with COVID are not marked absent. So as long as they're engaging, uh, now there are surely new rules around this. Um, if you're engaging in the asynchronous instruction or you're coming to office hours, um, you're going to be marked present. If you don't, you will be marked absent, right? So you have to engage in your classes in some way. Okay. Uh, question from Lisa. Uh, who can I talk to about ninth grade students switching a language? That's uh, Ms. Santiago Campbell. Oh, I see uh, Mary already responded to that. So oh, thanks, that, Mary. that's our assistant principal of Lote languages other than English. Um, talk to her about that. Okay. And I guess this is Mona. Uh, major starts junior year or midway through sophomore year? Uh, they select midway through sophomore year, but they, uh, they don't start until junior year. Oh, okay. Thanks, um, CKN, for that one. Okay, uh, so um, Tupapat um, is up. Um, Shannon was able to log in 
as a parent. All right. Okay. And that also, Erica responded to that too. Okay. Several people. Okay. Um, but if you're not getting any office hours, um, I guess this is pertaining to the question you just answered um, from Mac. So um, if we are not getting any office hours, all the, all the student get to the teacher. What, what do you mean if they're not offering office hours? Well, he said if they're, if we're not getting any office hours. Well, well so I, I'm assuming that's the question, um, the previous question uh, Mac had asked. And you answer saying um, office hours? Yeah, I mean, teachers, if teachers have any students that are, that have tested positive, they're required to give uh, office hours. Oh, okay, cool. Um, this is from Ben. When are the students expected to study for midterms? Uh, certain physics te <laughs> teachers given Omer to, to my freshman as uh, she is studying for our physics midterm. All right. Uh, I, I would say uh, send that piece of information over to um, my AP of physics, which is Mr. Evangelist, um, or you could send it to me and I'll send it to him. He'll have a talk with the teacher. And that doesn't sound, I mean, it's one thing to give homework when they're studying for another midterm. It's one thing, it's another thing to give homework when they're studying for your own midterm on top of that. So that's, uh, unless the homework is studying for the midterm, it, that doesn't make too much sense to me. Okay, thanks. Um, Andrea, <laughs> Andrea is saying um, there are still mistake in Chipapa. What day is the last day to fix? I think you, you mentioned the last day. That one. I mean, parents, uh, parents, uh, teachers, you know, need to know about the problem and then they could fix it, whatever, if they agree that it needs to be fixed and they could do so anytime before they submit their grades um, on the 2nd and the 28th for seniors. Okay, all right. Okay, Felix, question. Is student union open? Um, no, uh, it's there. It's just, but um, I, I still don't have the staff to staff it. I, I've had to pull uh, emergency support staff from all sorts of different places to deal with COVID. And although we've hired some new people, we needed them to deal with that as well. And as COVID cases are escalating, we need people to call the situation room, to, to log the cases in, to contact uh, parents, uh, to contact students. It's, it's been a lot. And so uh, I don't, unfortunately, I don't have the staff right now to uh, supervise that room all day. So as soon as hopefully things calm down and uh, I'm able to clear th some new staff, um, I'll get that thing open, but it's all set up. It's waiting. It just doesn't have supervision right now. Okay. Uh, question from Shu. I hope I pronounced the name correctly. Shu Ling. Um, there have been a lot of train delays lately. Um, is there a grace period before student is marked late? No, um, but look, just like absences, right? There, uh, you know, uh, we talked a little while ago about ex you know, excused absences, excused lates, those, those things don't exist. There's not excused anything. There is just explained, right? So you miss school and you explain why you've missed school and we accept that explanation. You're late and you explain why you're late and, um, and we accept that, you know, uh, explanation, um, but they are late. If you walk in late, you're late. I mean, that's, it, it's not a, uh, so, but, it would be, you know, you explain it and then it's not going to have a negative impact on you, but you should explain it. You shouldn't just waltz in, you know, in a class, in the middle of class and, and not offer an explanation. I don't want you to offer an explanation right in the middle of class, but at the end of class, it would be respectful to your colleagues in your class and your peers and especially the teacher in their course to say, hey, something happened on the train. I just want to let you know, you may have evidence of that. You may just tell them that something happened. But I think that's important to respect the integrity of the classroom experience and the teacher themselves, right? So you're explaining why you were late. It's not, you're late, you know, but you're, I think it's important to explain that. Okay, and this one is from Ben. Um, when will be the next parent-teacher meeting? Um, oh, that should be on the calendar. I think it's in March sometime. It, it's right around, uh, like the marking period ends and you get, uh, marking period grades, and it's right after that. 
So yeah, I, I got a question on that one too for you. Um, I, I got a couple of parents that complain about the last parent, um, you know, teacher meeting. Uh, they said they, you know, they missed the sign up date and they were hoping it could be a little longer. Um, you know, like you know, like earlier, so they, you know, they could sign up. Yeah, we'll give you more time to sign up, and I think we're gonna um, start employing uh, some methods. I think we're gonna limit the number of teachers that you could see. Um, I forgot the number that we agreed on. Maybe you could see five different classes or something like that. Um, we're not gonna have you go see lab teachers or advisory teachers. I think. Um, you could probably you could make an appointment with an advisory teacher if like something's going on that's a different story, but lab was a big thing. So I'm a physics teacher. I see you once a week in a lab, and then, but I also teach four regular sections of physics. And then all my lab parents take up all the spots, right? And um, and they really want to know about the physics course itself. But I'm not the physics teacher. I'm just the lab teacher, right? Who? So anyway, we're not going to have you sign up for any labs. Um, just the actual target course itself. Um, and we're going to sw uh, sweep out advisory. And I think we're going to limit you to only picking, uh, you only get to pick five classes. So uh, we think that'll help things move, run smoother and make more availability so everybody can get to where they want to. Okay. And also, if you can add that, um, I noticed some teacher I had made a, a, a couple um suggestion to me the last time is uh when you know when they call you know the, when the teacher call the parents they um if your phone is set to you know like block a call the you know the teacher call won't come through or if you set your phone to receive that you know you can't um you know the teacher can't ID their number then the call would not come through so um, parents need to make sure that you can and get unlisted number for just for that day and you can just turn it back on yeah. when the day's over yeah on that um, note i got a couple a couple of teachers men had mentioned that to me and i kind of forgot about it until yeah. now all, all teachers are calling from unlisted numbers all teachers so they, yes. they're like they're hitting star six seven or something beforehand so you don't have their cell phone number so it's all coming up as unlisted numbers so you can't there were a lot of people who had them blocked as lincoln was saying and then they weren't able to call you Yes, that's one of the, the major issues. Yeah. All right, so this question is from C. Kagan. Can, um, can grade B retroactively change? My child was punished last fall for being forced to quarantine. Um, I, don't, I don't know what punished means, but, um, <laughs> but the, uh, yes, uh, the teachers own their grades. So if a teacher tells me to change the grade from the fall, um, you know, the first marking period doesn't matter, actually, because it's it's literally a progress report. It's not transcripted. But if this grade, um, if a teacher enters a grade that that is wrong or it's based on, you know, uh, an, an old uh, what you're calling a punishment or something that is still impacting their grade from way back, um, a teacher can just tell me that they want to change a grade from the previous semester and it gets changed. So that's up to the teacher. There's also a great appeal process where you get up to the end of one uh, additional semester. In other words, you want to appeal a grade from January right now, you get until the uh, end of the year, till the end of June to appeal that grade. And that, that's an appeal process. But otherwise, if a teacher wants to change their grade, you talk to them and they're willing to change it, they want to change it, they just have to let me know when we change it. It's their grade. Okay, uh, this question is from Jerry. On the news, I saw that asynchronous instruction is available for students staying home, not due to COVID positive. Only no. if the teacher is willing, willing and it's approved by their supervisor. Right. So why, you know, why um, tech isn't doing the same? Like, that's what he's saying. Oh, oh, we're doing it. I mean, it, look, it's a new policy. It's, uh, you know... <laughs> It's, uh, you know, the, the, the mayor and chancellor announced something and then we just had to like put it in play, you know? So uh, this is a recent shift. Um, it is to clarify what you were talking about. It is up to the teacher. They are not required to provide asynchronous nor office hours to all students. They can if they want, 
but they if they don't want to, I can't force them to. But if somebody tests positive for COVID, they they have to. I, I and so that is their responsibility. So the reason that they need to get um, that they need to get approval is actually there's additional funding for it. So technically, I need to approve it. Um, but I've surely told all teachers um, that it's automatically going to get approved. So um, they don't have to worry about that. Um, okay. But they can't be forced to do it unless the, the student has tested positive. Okay, thank you. This is from Kajar. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Please forgive me if I have not. Um, for a selected major, would we be able to see the acceptance number by majors? No. I, I mean, I don't know what you're asking. Uh, the acceptance number, like how many yeah, kids got in? The acceptance number by major. No. I guess I want to know how many kids are accepted in a major. Um, okay. I mean, you could figure that out pretty easily, but we don't we don't uh, make public the numbers of students in each major. I mean, but they're they're even clicks, right? So they're in they're in clicks of thirty four. The 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 majors that have rooms that are in shop rooms. I mean, I think that's a bit antiquated that I'm calling it a shop room, but you know what I'm talking about are limited at twenty eight. So if you're if you're using like heavy machinery, you can only have 28 students in that particular room. Um, and that's it. So you see four sections of a major, it's capped at 34, like law, for example, it's four times 34 and that's how much we have. And so if it's six, it's six times 34. So, um, but yeah, we don't advertise all the numbers. I, and, and just to let you know, um, the idea is to get uh, as many kids their first choice as possible. Um, usually in the last couple of years, we were able to get uh, between 90 and 93% of students their first choice. And so, and then usually uh, we're hovering around 98 to 99% get either their first or their second choice. Okay, that's not bad. So okay. we're looking to get a hundred next time. Okay, cool. Yep. Okay, so this one is from Lori. My child, uh, let's make sure, give me a second. Yeah, Lori. Uh, my child has joined several clubs. Some meet by Zoom, some in person. Is there any way to check if he's getting a credit? If you're getting a credit? Yeah, um, uh, club credit. Yeah, um, that you need to reach out uh, to Miss Massey, but I wouldn't worry about that. And so, uh, yeah, they, they they have attendance sheets. They know who's where. You're not going to lose out on credit. Okay, this is from Natalia. Um, when is the last day to submit the missing work for the fall semester? I mean, uh, the end of the fall, right? <laughs> and so, the uh, I mean, technically, the 31st is the bitter end. I'm surely not going to advertise that after this room. Um, uh, teachers will, you know find some time to grade that work but you know it's not it's not going to work if if every kid is is throwing work at them on the 31st as you can imagine with with a, just a couple of days to turn around everything okay uh thanks Mary, for for that information uh so jennifer um when is the last day for student to end in work I, we just answered that one too oh, okay yeah yeah so, Roxana, please show information about senior college application process uh, and early college acceptance, if it's possible. Um, so, Roxana, I guess I would ask, like, is your kid a junior? Is a, I don't know where they are, but um, you should be finding out that information through advisory, even in freshmen and sophomores, um, but especially juniors are barraged with the college application process. If you're a senior right now and you don't know what the college application process is, you're, well, we need to talk immediately. Yeah, um, just to let the parents know, um, yeah, the, the senior application should be in. Um, early, <laughs> um, early acceptance is over, yep. as far as I know. And you're, you're now in regular um, acceptance for seniors. So depends on the school you're going to. Yeah. Um, the 15, somewhere the 15 or the last day to submit your application. And then your yeah, financial aid does need to be submitted by, by the, the end of March. So 
So yeah, acceptance. Yes, yeah. so acceptance letter for um, acceptance letter for regular admission would be out in two in, in about two months. Okay, mm -hmm. that's also an update for senior parents. Yeah, uh, I have a question. feeling though. That I was just going to say, Roxana probably has a student that's younger, um, but I hope, but... Yeah, I'm open to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, this is from Shuling. Um, can you revoke COVID consent once submitted? Yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah, thank you, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're just going to go to the website and, and you know, yes. Um, Ariana, my child was absent for... And uh, absent for marked, uh, my child was absent for marked, absent after the holiday break because of COVID. I was told if the child is not physically in the building, they would be marked absent. Um, he was engaged and did work. Is there any way to fix this now? Yeah, um, Ariana, um, reach out to Ms. Cuesta, head of attendance, uh, we'll be able to fix that. Yep. We'll have to okay. verify from the teacher that some work was done. All right. Um, I just I just want to add to that right now because it's questions coming up a lot. Um, they won't be marked absent, but right now there's only the, there's a code in the system that has to be changed for every student who has tested positive and has been quarantined for two weeks. So that code has to be changed for, you can imagine a lot of students. Um, they're working on changing it. It's gonna take a while, so please be patient. Ms. Quest is uh, working on, you know, adding, changing all these codes and every single, you know, for every single student. So that's what's happening right now. So you might not see this right away, but it is gonna happen. Okay. Um, so Simi, uh, I hope I pronounced it correctly. Um, that answer your question to, you know, and absent. Uh, for Jerry, um, kids get tested at school or only if they are tested positive? Nah. Um, if you mean by tests that are given to them, Jerry, we are now, um, we're now in a situation going forward where we're going to give every single child, uh, student, and we did so last week as well, um, and this week, every single student, uh, actually the students are getting it this week, Thursday, uh, which was today and tomorrow, but every single student is going to get two tests every single week to take home, um, you know, to two tests. And so uh, I imagine that's what you're asking about. But yeah, regardless whether they tested positive, they have symptoms, whatever it is, we're just giving every single kid two tests. Okay, thank you. Um, Cherry, um, yes, I, I got bombarded with a couple um, with these questions too. I heard many students are waiting in auditorium due to teacher absences. Uh, is a solution being sought out or what is and uh, what is the problem? Um, yeah, I, I mean, at the end, you said it was this an old problem. It, it, at this point, it's an old problem that there was uh, over two days I had extreme staffing issues. Um, those days are gone. I, I have, uh, you know, 25% of the staffing uh, absences. Uh, today and yesterday and the day before that I had right before the break, right before the break, uh, the two days before the break, especially the the uh, last day before the break. Um, it was, uh, I think it snowed that day too. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's the only time it happened, um, but already resolved. We just had two days where staffing absences spiked. Okay, and this is Simi again. She's still she's asking, who do you who do you explain absence to? Yeah, um, well, I, I would say I, I like the notion of explaining absences to your teacher. It goes back into the respect for the teacher and the course notion, right? Um, and then ultimately to have absences uh, if you want to. Uh, yeah, and then that that's really where it goes. But then ultimately it gets to Ms. Questa. Like I I want to talk about absence for a second. Everybody's consumed with, with attendance and whatnot. Um, uh, who's not consumed about attendance is colleges, right? And so um, they're not like, oh my, like you missed four days this year and you're not getting into like Harvard or Binghamton or wherever you want to go, right? These 
these are truly not factors for universities. Um, and so I understand you want to clean up these absences if they're an error, understand that. But but just realize I'm not, it's a little bit of window dressing, right? It's not it's not holding you back or or having some demerit against you or something uh, or something's held against you if you have a few absences here and there. You have you know sixty absences that surely needs to be explained to a university, but um, you know in in egregious cases. But otherwise, not the biggest deal in the world. But I do feel you know as an ed educator, it, it's important. It, it's it, if you're absent from my class. Um, to say, hey, I really wanted to be there and I respect your class and I respect you, but here is what prevented me from being there. I was sick, I this, you know, whatever it is, right? Um, I think that's important. That's important to hear as an educator that um, what prevented somebody from being in your class. Just, you know, coming back after you've been out a few days and saying nothing, you know, it, it, it delivers a, a different message to your teachers, you know? Okay. Thank you. Uh, this is from Oliver. Uh, what's the policy for rapid COVID test kit that gets sent home with students who apparently don't have specific exposure? Are they supposed to get um, tests on a specific day? Not really. I mean, you could you you could test regularly every single week. I think that that's a great idea, and that's why we're supplying it. It doesn't really matter which day you start, and you're taking the next one. You know, like five days later. Um, and then you're, you know, doing it again and again. Um, if you feel that you don't want to take the test, you don't have to do that either. Just because we're supplying tests doesn't mean that it's my policy that all students have to be taking this test every week. I think it's a good idea to do so, but if you want to save them for when you, when you might need them, I don't know, but you are getting two every single week. So you should always have them when you need them, you know? Okay. And this one is from Sunita. Um, hope I pronounce the name correctly. Uh, my child is a freshman uh, and quarantined for 10 days prior to January 15. She submitted an absent form with those days and wrote COVID on as a reason. However, she did um, asynchronous work during the time. Is she still going to be marked absent for those days? Uh, no, we're gonna we'll go back and clear this up. You, you said like and going so so if you do the work if you show that you've done some work it's going to get cleared up but you can imagine there's so many kids over so many days as you see the numbers you know uh, you saw you know 215 today in the last 9 days that's 250 kids that we have to go back and and uh deal with their absences and it's not 215 it's 215 times you know however many days you know school days there were in those 9 days um, cause we have to redo it every day. Right. So it's just, it's going to take some time to clear out and change these absences to present. So just be patient with that. Um, I would be, uh, I will, I would surely let, uh, teachers know, especially for seniors, you know, and, uh, and Ms. Cuesta, if she could clear that up as much as possible, that's a priority. Um, even though I said before that, that schools don't really, uh, look at absences, uh, you know, if we can clear it up, we can clear it up. And so, uh, yeah. Okay. Thanks. Uh, this question is from Mona. Um, and this is, I have this from two parents already. Um, during the, um, the parents teacher conference, um, when, the, when the parents is on Zoom and, uh, you know, they're getting called on the phone because, you know, the, you know there's some late um, issue between the teacher or I guess um, something happened. So is there a way to fix this? I mean, you can't you can't try to like make the perfect schedule and do them back to back to back to back to back, right? I mean, you need to give yourself a little bit of time in between just in case something goes awry, either with you or teachers are running late. You know, it, it, that sort of steamrolls as, as the days go on or the evening goes on. Uh, sometimes it's hard to stick on things to the minute. So I wouldn't have... I'm in this conference with you until 7.15 and I'm on a conference with somebody else at 7.16. I would give yourself a little bit of a buffer in between uh, to make sure it all works out. Okay, thank you. I guess CK, um, CKN is trying to um, you know, answer the question, which she said by punished, she meant um, grade reduction. 
So if something is unexplained and late, it could receive a reduction up to 25% at teacher discretion. Um, if, if you're sick and you come back and say, you know, here's the work that I missed or what work have I missed and, you know, you give it in, but um, that's reasonable and should not have a grade reduction. Okay, thank you. Um, next question is Anton. I hope I'll pronounce the name correctly. Um, when student is late due to subway disruption, who and when can they explain that situation? So you, you already said that to the, the yep. teachers. Yep. Okay. Um, all right, so Mary answered that question too. Okay. Um, that's Mary. Jerry. Okay. Okay. Um, one parent is saying this is from Timothy. Um, he said he, um, you know, he's a freshman. I guess he was a freshman child, and he only got one COVID test today uh, instead of two. Uh, you know. So you know what happened last week. Uh, Last, last week, the, the kits came two in, a, two in a box. And it sounds like this week, they sent us different kits that wasn't a kit, that was singular, that was one in a box, right? So the teacher was should have seen that it was one in a box and given every kit two. But what it sounds like is some of the teachers didn't look at the box and just gave it thinking that there was two in there, but there was only one. Um, all right, well, I mean, the good thing is that even they have one, it's Thursday or Friday that they're gonna get it tomorrow. And on Tuesday next week, they're gonna get two more anyway. So they should be okay. So even if you took one now, you could use one of the ones that you get on Tuesday and you know, you're know you good as far as the, the five days span. Okay. Um, Roxanne, um, I have don't remember your question, but you said I meant how are seniors doing? I don't remember what, what your question was. She was the was. one about college. Mr. Newman, if you do. She was the oh, one. Oh, college, about, okay. College question. So how are the seniors doing? Um, I, st I don't know that. Oh, you mean how are they doing as far? Oh, I get it. As far as college acceptance, like how many kids have gotten to Harvard? How are they doing? Oh, I don't have that data yet. And so... What, what happens is we don't see acceptances actually. We only see when a student has determined where they're going to college. So you could get into Harvard, Yale, and Princeton, right? And I don't, I don't know that, right? But then when you decide to go to Yale, I obviously know you got into Yale and then you decided to go there. So the only data we really get is where you chose to go. Um, I don't know if I can go in and see all of your acceptances. But even if I can, you know, we don't look at that. We just track where students go, um, where they end up going. You know, a, a lot of kids, you know, you, you might have, you know, out of 1,500 kids, you okay. might have a lot of kids who applied to 25 schools and got into 20 of them. We're, we're not tracking all that. Okay, thanks, Mr. Newman. Okay, uh, Jennifer, she said, so if a teacher say the last day to end in, to end in work, to end in work is tomorrow. Does my child have till the end of the month or should they listen to the teacher? Well, I would say listening to the teacher is good in this regard. The market period does end tomorrow. That That is real. The market period ends tomorrow, right? Um, and so um, work that is done during what was formerly Regents Week and after that is actually not going to be anything graded for um, for the fall. Matter of fact, you will find that te no teachers will be giving homework next week at all. Um, there's no reason for it because the grade the market period technically ended ends tomorrow. But um, uh, that being said. You know they're going to have to take stuff that comes in afterwards but technically the marking period ends tomorrow so they're going to surely advertise tomorrow with the hope that everybody gets anything by tomorrow so if you can get it in by tomorrow that would be great um but, is that uh, possible? what was that lincoln is that possible to get all that stuff in tomorrow i don't know i don't know how how jammed up a particular student is you know so uh you have a couple of assignments get it in by tomorrow if you, if you have 20 assignments, obviously that's not going to happen by tomorrow, right? And so yeah. um, 
So they will accept the work. They're not going to advertise that they're going to accept the work. They will accept the work. And obviously they're going to be doing grading for everything they get from tomorrow all the way up until, you know, Wednesday the 2nd, right? Um, but yeah, so, uh, so the, technically the marking period ends tomorrow. But okay. they can accept yeah. late work. All right, great. Uh, this question is from Simi. I guess she's responding back. Um, when you get a robocall, it says send in a note, but it doesn't say where. I don't think this question was answered. I have no idea where these robocalls are coming from, to be honest with you. So we have a robocall system that we have not used all year, right? So I, I have ability to send out a message to everybody about all sorts of things. We haven't used it this year at all. Um, I, I think I think these robocalls are coming, honestly, from the DOE that's pulling data. So for example, if you're if we've marked you absent, possibly the city is sending you a call that you're absent and they're doing that unbeknownst to me. But I have not been sending out any a tech phone number. It says tech. Oh, I guess somebody said really? that. Okay. Wow. Who sent that thing? I don't know. We tried to search where this robocall was coming from earlier this week, and we didn't think it was coming from our school. Um, that's interesting. So it's coming from uh, a 718-804 exchange. Um, I'd be interested. It, it might say tech. Yeah, email me. I'd love to, because we tried to figure this out. No one's admitting in the school that they set up the robocall. So I wonder if somebody's like... <laughs> Did, did it and, and isn't telling us okay <laughs> yeah okay yes. and if you you can email me i sent it to mr newman so which will yeah. way it's it's fine um thanks lm uh okay the robocall are unclear it says you must send in a note but where okay so it doesn't tell you where to send the note in so uh, that's one of the issue okay well it's a, it's the same old absence note that we've been talking about just the okay. absence form if if your child is actually out um, we can't figure it out. Okay, and this is from Shulin again. Um, attendance, not important for college colleges, but part of the overall subject grade. Um, I mean, not really. Um, once again, if a teacher knows um, why you've been out, um, you know, that's been explained and whatnot. Students don't get uh, dinged on their grades for attendance solely. I mean, you might miss some work and now you have to make the work up, but you know, it's not like the old days, if you have so many absences, like it hurts your grades. That, that's, that's not true. And that was not even true uh, before COVID as well. So um, yeah, I mean, it is important to let your teacher know that your the reason for your explanation of your absences surely that is important. Okay, hey, Simi, if you want to do do me a favor, send me an email with your full question, and I get back to you on that one. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, so G, e, um, okay. Uh, G was saying, does the box say two tests? School have been um, multiple kinds. Okay, school has, multi has been multiple kinds. Yeah, yeah. A every week we might get different brands of tests. It's whatever. We get them sort of indirectly from the state. The state purchases them. Um, and, uh, and they might even be getting it from the federal government. And then the state actually delivers them to school facilities who then gives them to me. So I think whatever, whoever has the kits that week, you know, so that's who they get them from. I don't know if they have a contract with one company or not. So uh, I, I imagine they're all very similar in how to use, but look at the instructions. I will say that the first time I use one of those home kits, like I, I messed it up. And so it's not, I'm not saying it's rocket science, but I, I wasn't really looking at the directions and then whatever. And then I ended up with not enough testing fluid in the thing. I squeezed the thing at the wrong time and it shot like half the fluid out. And then I didn't have enough fluid left to, uh, to register the kit. So um you know, I was a little blase with the directions. <laughs> so, um, so it is, you know, you got, so you do got to read them 
and uh, and I, kids might be slightly different, but uh, but there's that. Yeah. Okay, and I will post in the chat. Um, you know, where you guys can um, get additional free kits from the government website, the federal website. I I will will post that again. Okay, so um, let's go back here. Okay, and uh, M Weber. Um, Navian say it does not record acceptance, but oh, I've been. I mean, say it does record acceptance, but not attended attendance. I guess. Right. I guess that's imperfect data. Um, well, so. there's you know in Navians, it actually do. There's a way to pull the data from Navians um, correctly. Um, I, I check it out and get back to you on that one. Okay, so Tasha, uh, Tasha. Okay. Um, tomorrow will be a critical weather condition. Is there anything in place to face this, like on a snow day? Snow day, huh? Um, I don't know. It's supposed to be bad weather tomorrow? I'm not quite sure. I don't think but... so. I think it's just cold. It's supposed to be sunny, and like I'm looking now, it's supposed to be sunny and 20 degrees. They got no snow. So, okay, so I guess if it's, if it's um, too cold, would there be? Oh, <laughs> come on now. There's no cold days. <laughs> That's not a thing. <laughs> okay. Hey, just just um, Okay. Tanya, um, passing, period, um, passing period isn't long enough from basement north to six west. Okay, and my daughter keep getting in trouble for being late for class is there any is there um any way to get the teacher to be more understanding yeah uh just let me know and I, I could talk to the teacher i mean and explain that that's that's a rarity that you're going from the basement to the sixth floor um and and we surely we don't have elevators on and so it's it is difficult um so I, i'm surprised that the teacher is not a little bit more accepting of that, knowing that we're not letting students in the elevators at this time. So, uh, all right, but if yeah, if it's an issue, just let me know, and I'll 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 have a talk with the teacher. Okay, uh, Jody, come on, Jody, yeah. Okay, she's getting robocall too. Okay, uh, when our son was home with COVID, and as a uh, as a blank where name is filled in, and a blank that says absent. Yeah, somebody just give me a copy of the robocall. Okay. Um, yeah, it seems like, yeah, copy where it's coming from. Okay, I, thanks to me. Maybe this was set up like a decade ago and no one turned it off. I, I don't know. I'll look into it. <laughs> Let me look into it. Okay. Uh, Mary said to just ignore them. Okay. <laughs> thanks, Mary. Um, okay. This is, uh, so she posted a number. Okay. Apps and forms are on the website. Thanks, Mary. Okay. Alright, Okay, so Felix is asking, is there um, any update on the building exterior work? Would it ever end? Yeah, <laughs> it won't end. Uh good one, Felix. Um, uh, not in your Brooklyn Tech lifetime, maybe not even in my Brooklyn Tech lifetime. Uh, so you, you know, so everybody knows, and I've surely told this a number of times, but um, so they're redoing the parapet, the top three and a half feet of the whole building all the way around. And so at first, the scaffolding was there to make sure that no one gets hit from falling debris, to be honest, and they were doing no work. Now the scaffolding is unbelievably robust, covering like every square inch, and they are doing a significant amount of work. Uh, the project was supposed to take three and a half years initially when they actually started doing work. That was about a year and a half ago. Um, before that, there was about a decade of scaffolding that was just protecting people from below. Um, and, uh, and they have been doing the work um, during, uh, during COVID times, not now, but especially that when we were shut down um, for uh, the six months or so they were also shut down and not able to do work. So even in that year and a half, we probably got a year of work on a three and a half year project. Um, that's probably going to be like a seven year project. So uh, not anytime soon. I, I love to see it go before I go. 
Um, I don't think it's going to go before you go. <laughs> but, okay, um, I believe that one. I mean, what, what the thing is, is everything they see, you know, you think, oh, three and a half feet of bricks on top of the building, like all the way around. Like I could do that in a couple of weeks, right? Everything they find when they pull the bricks out, a pipe, a this and that, everything they find has to be added on and added on and then resubmitted to get additional funding and then get approval and then do the work. And every single inch you chip away, you find something else you have to do. Now they're already talking about, we have these metal cages outside um, that uh, protect the whole roof, right? So, you, so uh, no one can fall off, but also we have students engaging in physical education at, at a, a previous point up there and whatnot. Now they found the, the metal itself has integrity issues and now adding on to that now they're talking about redoing the metal cages around the entire school as well which is a huge undertaking because the rust that is the foundation i mean the 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 metal foundation on the beams they all when they pull the brick away they see the the foundation's all rusted so now they got to do that and so uh yeah anyway it never ends i don't know Never is the answer, Felix. No, I don't know. It's uh, I can't answer that. But uh, but you know, we do have progress reports. I get uh, progress reports monthly, and you know, and and actual monthly meetings on progress. And it's I don't know. It uh, it each meeting seems like we're talking about the same things we're talking about the uh, the last meeting. Except, hey, we found this new you know screw that's missing. So now we're gonna have to replace that. And now I got to file a report and get the funding. And so there's always all, all they do is keep adding things. And there's surely no the progress meetings don't talk much about progress, just additions to the job. Unfortunately, so okay, yeah. And this one is from Carmen. Um, what is NX work due date? Oh. Uh, my child has uh, her, you know, hear that it's January 31st. That, that, Carmen, that Carmen is a hard, hard deadline. That if on the, the day after the 31st, you cannot hand in NX work. So that is an agreement with the DOE um, and that's it. So NX's sunsets on January 31st, literally, I believe at midnight and our teachers although they might be willing to accept work after that, they cannot. And so that is a hard deadline. The, the uh, policy on NX says that no work after January 31st can or will be accepted. Okay. Um, I post in the chat um, the government website where you can order your free COVID test. At, uh, you get four um, per test you know, package. Okay, uh, so this is about robocall. Uh, my son got um, robocall. I got I get from my son school are from an AP there, and they are accurate. Oh, that's Mary. Mary's. Oh, that's Mary. Oh, Mary. Oh, looking, uh, the, oh. the robocalls work at her kids' school. She's saying, why can't we get to work? <laughs> Thanks, Mary. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, I'm just saying it's a from it's from a teacher at the school and they're they're they're, you know, I don't I don't question them. So yeah. It was accurate. We, we but I you know I'm gonna ask right. them. I'm gonna ask yeah. them who sent them. I'm gonna I'm gonna invest. Well, uh, no, but I can set them and send them. Like I can, I have the ability to. It sounds like honestly that this robocall was set up years ago and no one just like turned it off. I'm just gonna go and turn it off. And <laughs> okay. so it sounds like it's set up to to uh, give robocalls to every kid who is absent. And so in in former years where that was good, um, it doesn't seem like it works so much this year. So I'll uh, I'll find out where the robocall is coming from and rip the cord out of the wall. I mean, okay. the, the big question is whether they're coming from kids swipe not swiping in or from, that's why I just can't figure out. But, well, or from third period class. Yeah, they told me, um, Pierre told me they're not coming from CAS. So I don't know. Right. Where, where? I'll track it down. All right, I got more yeah. information now. Okay, um, I think I got, that's all the questions oh, wow. in the chat. All right. Okay, all right. If guys, if I miss any question, just send me an email, I get it to Mr. Newman. All right, sounds good. Okay, uh, Vito, um, do I hear a, a option to close the meeting? A motion to adjourn, sir? Is that what you're asking yes. for? 
Second. I would yes, be I'm happy moving. to make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> second. Thank you, Rita. Okay, we got a second. So the meeting is adjourned.